Casemiro. Casemiro. Honestly, I'm still a bit staggered that we've signed Casemiro. But for so long, I've been speaking about Manchester United's desperate need for a, for a defensive midfielder. Frankie de Jong, even Frankie de Jong wouldn't have solved that scenario. And in Casemiro, we've gone and signed one of the elite defensive midfielders in world football. Top three for the last five, six, seven years. And we're all praying and hoping this goes differently, really, to how, well, other big signings, certainly of his age, have gone at the club. But what I'm going to do in this video is run through his first interview with Manchester United, with Andy Mitten, actually, in Old Trafford. Yeah, speaking in fluent Spanish, very nice, Andy. Um, and where he runs through and he speaks about his ambitions at the club, his ambitions to work with, Te with Ten Hag uh, and uh, sort of his goals and what he wants to achieve with Fred. There's a, it's a cracking interview. I'm going to run through the most important points in this video. So make sure you drop a like on the video. And make sure you've got a big smile on your face like Eric Ten Hag does here when he meets, well, when he met, sorry, Casemiro at Carrington. I genuinely think I'd have a similar sort of smile on my face. It's just like... Like that. And it's exactly what I would be like if I met Casemiro. It's exactly what I feel like, the fact that we've signed him. Look, I say here at the start, you don't have to tell me about the Glazers. You don't have to... I've done everything I possibly can do and will continue to do with this platform to get these leeches out of our club. And yeah, I am frustrated about what's gone on with Frankie de Jong and how, well, it's, we've taken all summer to get a, go after a player we're not going to sign. But I can understand all of that and at the same time be ridiculously excited at the idea of Casemiro playing for my football club. All right? They're not mutually exclusive. Casemiro, is in, I hope it's going to be an incredible signing. And this is what he said in his first interview. Let's run through the transcript. Make sure you drop a like in the video and you let me know what you think in the comments. First question Andy asked, he said, look, what are you feeling like after signing for the club? He said, well, firstly, many thanks. There's no doubt I'm really excited. I've been very warmly welcomed. I've already felt that special affection from everyone towards me. Of course, that's important. I felt that great affection from the moment I arrived and I think it's a new challenge. I'm absolutely delighted. I feel like I'm 20 or 18 years of age. I'm raring to go, excited to be amongst my teammates, playing in the stadium, and I think it's a huge excitement. And I'm absolutely delighted. Casemiro is, of course, the wrong, eight, the wrong side of 30, uh, which seems to be the precipice. Everyone looks over the other side and goes, well, you can't, nah, footballers over the age of 30, you can't. They're not elite anymore. Apart from the fact that Kevin De Bruyne is over 30, Van Dijk's over 30, Mahrez is over 30. There's a ton of players who are over 30. Casemiro's words there, not mine. He feels 18. He feels 20. Physically, he's known as being an absolute monster on and off the pitch. He trains himself. He, he, he commits himself to that role. To, be, to I suppose, a, a, like a midfield Ronaldo, I suppose, if you can call it that sense. Maybe I'm going a little bit over the top there. But he is clearly excited to be here and and i suppose the fears of a lot of fans are there's going to be two reasons that he's come to the club number one is going to be he's chasing the money and he wants that last big payday now let's not get let's not just have a red tinted specs on and, and think that's not at least partly the case because of course it is he's got a contract now to his 34 35 much bigger wages than around madrid yeah of course but he's got the ambition to drive himself to succeed at the club and that is significant and that is important as well Go down there saying, look, what the first impressions? Well, as you said, the love of those around me, it was amazing when I arrived. People were really friendly with me, showing me lots of affection. He'd like to feel that as a person. And I imagine he's felt that straight away. Every new signing feels that at United. But, well, let's be honest, how many of them have actually delivered onto it? That's where I hope it changes with Casemiro. There's always going to be that little niggly voice at the back of my mind saying, you know what, Sam, you've, you've seen signings like this before. Players found a little bit past their best on big money, on big wages that you have that excitement and hope for that just don't work out. I just hope and I pray that Casemiro is the one that changes that, that switches that around, that this is the one that works out for Manchester United. In terms of how he feels he is as a midfielder, this is what he said when he was asked to describe himself. Because that's difficult. I think I'm a player that loves to work hard, a player that gives everything on the pitch, but not just over 90 minutes in training too, which for me is the most important thing. You train as you play, and I think regardless of the scoreline or what's happening on the pitch, of course, everyone wants to win in matches, win in training, learn in training. I'm one of those players who wants to go home 
No, I've done my job. That's my philosophy, my philosophy, sorry, my mentality. And now it's about giving everything for Manchester United. He's asked there, he's saying, look, so it's important to train with the same intensity. He goes, for sure. For me, you train like you're playing. That's key to winning games. You have to train as hard as possible to play at your best, be strong and fully committed. And we need that sort. We do need that. We need those per personalities and that mentality inside this dressing room. We've lacked those sorts of leaders for so long. And I know, I uh, trust me, I'm not saying that he is going to be a new it is way to. Let me turn that down a little bit. After being introduced to the fans. Got to be excited there. Well, right. But I'll be honest, this filled me with some Manchester serious United excitement. Field. Just the idea of, what if? What if, Sam? What if Casemiro can come in and I'm not saying become Roy Keane V2 because there is no Roy Keane V2. That sort of leader in the middle of the pitch, somebody who takes the game by the scruff and then it can controls it in the great situations and in the bad situations, in the, the good times and the tough times. We need that person that we can rely on in midfield so there's not a gaping hole there that teams just run through. Been like a hot knife through butter going through our midfield for so long. And the, I've, geez, I've said this so many times, I'll say it one more time. Liverpool got Fabinho. City got Rodri. They had Fernandinho. Chelsea have got Kante. Uh, Spurs have got um, Hoiberg. Uh, Arsenal have got Partey. Uh, Real Madrid had Casemiro. Barcelona had Busquets. I mean, do you want me to go on? Every elite top team over the last fight, it's the way that modern football is. You need that powerful defensive midfielder. And I'll be honest... Frankie de Jong would not have been that sort of player. No, I'm not saying I'm happy we're not signing Frankie de Jong because that would be a complete lie. I want to sign Frankie de Jong. But in the same way that if we signed de Jong, there would have been still a weakness alongside him for that ball winner, that enforcer. It's now the flip side of that. We've signed that enforcer in, a, in Casemiro, but the weakness still exists in bringing the ball out from the back with the ball, which is ultimately what Ten Hag wanted to do. But maybe, maybe the Casemiro and Fred relationship is going to work better than we think it's going to. And this is what you had to say about Fred. And I thought this was an interesting few comments. He goes, well, well here, before coming here, I spoke to Fred. He's a friend who I've played alongside in the national team for a good number of games and years. And I know him well. He's a great player. And that's why he plays for United which, and Brazil, which is difficult to get into. He's got a special relationship with him. And he was asked about Fred's qualities. Fred's got a lot of qualities. He's a good player, good movement, very mobile, passes the ball well, has a good shot on him. But we know, and we've seen the qualities and the, I suppose... The weaknesses of Fred's game. But I believe they've only lost one game together while starting for Brazil. And Fred plays for Brazil. And this is a Brazil team which is rejuvenated. A Brazil team which is certainly looking stronger than it has done for a good few years. I'm really interested to see how this dynamic can work at Manchester United. Because maybe you're going to see uh, Casemiro and Fred as the two central midfielders with Bruno in front of him. Or maybe Ericsson in front of them. Maybe they're rotating. Maybe Ericsson drops and plays alongside Casemiro. There's options. Real genuine midfield options to base around Casemiro at the bottom of the triangle. And Fred, I'll be really interested to see how that does go. Uh, now, uh, Casemiro was also asked about, you know, when did you first hear about this transfer? Because let's be honest, it happened really quickly, didn't it? Casemiro out of nowhere. I called it a fantasy. Completely nutly wrong. Oh, my hands out there. Sorry. I think, well, I think we all agreed at that point. But he was left on a bench. True and many and Camavinga started, I believe, for Real Madrid in their first game. Well, true and many did anyway. Casemiro, within a week. This is what he said. He goes, from the very first moment, from the United directors have been great with me, and that's what I needed. They showed me a lot of affection. I want to show it as soon as possible in training and in games because of this affection shown towards me by signing me. That's why I want to get going now. and I can't wait to start. And it's just, as I say, we've signed the defensive midfielder people. I know that Frankie de Jong is going to be the uh, it's going to be the the main conversation really coming out the out of this summer transfer window and the things that we did right the things that we did wrong and no doubt now that it's coming towards the end of it and we're not signing de Jong it something was misguided whether it was Eric Ten Hag just being stubborn and not really having any true belief that ten, that Frankie de Jong would change his mind we don't know let's not speculate on that but yeah it's frustrating but it's ended up with us signing Casemiro and I tell you what. As far as plan, B, plan B's go, find me a better one than that. It's a completely different plan B. It's a massive pivot away from that playmaker who's going to receive the ball from the defense and bring it out. I told you there really, there were no alternatives to De Jong for Ten Hag. And that's obvious because in Casemiro, we've signed a completely different profile of player. He's gone, right, okay, if I can't get De Jong, let's go for Casemiro and I'll work on 
helping Fred develop inside that role, helping Ericsson develop inside that role. He'd rather choose that and sign Casemiro than sign somebody else instead of Frankie de Jong. I knew there wasn't any plan, any plan B, not in a, in a de Jong profile, but plan B was a complete pivot towards Casemiro. And I'm fine with that. And this is what he also said about look, sort of a message for the fans to finish the interview. He said, I'm excited to be here, extremely happy. I appreciate the affection everyone's shown me from day one in the airport, everyone. I'm delighted and I'm sure that I will give everything, not just in games, in training. You can count on me as another United player and he wants to win matches and titles like all the players and fans. I mean, let's hope so, eh, Casemiro? Because, yeah, I've forgotten what a title is. Jeez, I've forgotten what, yeah, I've forgotten what it's like to be a competitive football team in the Premier League. That's all, I, I personally feel that's all we're asking for. This year, as Manchester United fans, we want to have our competitive edge back. We don't want to have a soft underbelly and be the, the whipping boys of the Premier League anymore. I don't want to go into a Liverpool game and City game going, oh, don't pump us, please. That didn't happen against Liverpool at Old Trafford. Casemiro, look, as I said, I think you've got every right to be frustrated about what's gone on with De Jong. To think that that was a big mistake by Manchester United. But if you think I'm not going to be excited about signing Casemiro, you're, you're gravely mistaken. And I hope that he is the man that changes that long, long list of players that United have signed post-Fergie that have been slightly, not over the hill, but older than you'd want them to be before, they, before you, they came to Manchester United on big wages for big money that hasn't worked out. I hope Casemiro changes that. I hope Casemiro can turn himself into a Roy Keane type player. Somebody that us fans can know and trust to absolutely dominate that midfield. Because if he can even be half the player that Roy Keane was, Manchester United will be a completely different team in midfield this year. And I think he absolutely will be. And I'm really, really over the moon for this signing. I can't explain how excited I am. And no, it doesn't take away from everything I feel about the Glazers, which I will continue to do on this platform. So please don't accuse me of that because it's just false. But yeah, I'm excited about Casemiro. I'm sure you are too. You let me know what you think about uh, that in the comments. I'm going to do a, a video probably later today on the, my uh, predicted start 11 for Southampton. And he's going to be in it. Even if he doesn't play, he's going to be in my predicted 11 because I want him there. You can let me know what you think in the comments. But Casemiro, man. Casemiro. <laughs>